Welcome to KCTS 9 Connects, taking you beyond the headlines of Northwest news, issues, and politics. Well, the new year is here, and we want to start 2010 on a bright note by sharing a little inspiration. The holiday season is a time of giving, but some people give their time, effort, and money all year round. They are philanthropists, activists, and volunteers. Every so often, we try to tell you about some of them in our segment, People You Should Know. Tonight, three people you should know, working hard to make our communities and the world a better place. We begin with a 16-year-old girl from Tacoma named Mina Sadagaran, who just earned a 2009 Philanthropy Award, not just for her work in her own community, but for what she has done to help people she doesn't even know on the other side of the world. Mina Sadagaran is a very compassionate young lady. She is currently a junior at Annie Wright School in Tacoma, and after working with hundreds of students through the years, she really stands out. She's a great student. She's an engaged student. She runs track. She does debate. She's involved with the United Way. She's on other boards. She has done environmental restoration work, transitional housing programs. She was just recently appointed to our United Way of Pierce County Board of Directors, where she will be taking a leadership role at a very high level. Mina is definitely a very worldly student. Her parents were raised around the world. They really view the world as a kind of global society. I think it's just something that has been born with her, that she wants to give back and make a difference in the community. During Mina's sophomore year, she was reading a New York Times article written about young girls in Afghanistan. And the story by Dexter Filkins was about a group of thugs who don't want girls to be educated. And in order to intimidate them, they threw acid in the face of these young girls walking to school. Shamsia, a 15-year-old, took the brunt of the attack and the acid scarred her face, and she needed surgery. And that's what affected Mina. She could put herself in that girl's position and just felt that compassion to help her out. So she got on the phone, called the New York Times, who put her in contact with the reporter, Dexter Filkins, and she told him that she wanted to do something about it and, and really asked him, what can I do? So she and Dexter kind of worked out a plan. She would raise funds. He would work with the family. She went and opened a bank account called Project Shamsia. Then she wrote a letter to family and friends. She gets an idea, and she is absolutely a fabulous leader in that she's able to rally the troops. People responded to that passion. Mina, through her fundraising efforts, raised over $6,000 and combined that with other People who around the country realized how wrong this was. They raised over $30,000 that Dexter Filkins is now kind of managing, and he's done two things with that. They purchased a bus, and now they're able to transport the girls safely from home to school. And Dexter's working with her family right now and a surgeon in the United States around the details on getting the surgery to take place to repair her face. Mina sets a fabulous example of what teenagers are and can be in our communities. I nominated Mina because I saw true philanthropy in her. She connected on a personal level. You know, on the other side of the world, here's this girl who's just like me and has all of these challenges. So I have a responsibility to help this girl. It's Mina, and that's just how she is. She doesn't just empathize and, and say somebody should do something. She actually gets out and does it. She doesn't let the barriers get in the way. I think she's a person who is going to really make a difference. She's one of those people that you meet in life that makes you want to be a better person. Mina Sadagaran joins me now to talk more about her work and her honor. And I have to tell you, I uh, 
was the MC at the National Philanthropy Day celebration. It's the Washington Chapter Association of Fundraising Professionals. Uh, about a thousand people there, and when your story was featured, there was really this palpable sense of uh, great feeling for the work you're doing. Um, how has it changed you? I have to say that this whole experience has been very humbling for me to see that as a teenager, as a 15, 16 year old, my efforts have had an impact on someone on the other side of the world. And going into this process, I wasn't sure about the kind of reactions, the responses I would get. I wasn't sure how much money I would be able to raise, how long this process would last. But just seeing the generosity of all of the donors has really impressed me and has humbled me so much. I'm very thankful. What's the status now of, of the young girl that was uh, the unfortunate victim mm -hmm. of this awful thing? So Mr. Filkins, the reporter who wrote the story. From the New York Times. Yeah, Mr. that Filkins. got me started right. on this process. He has been in constant communication with her family. And the issue was not how many doctors were willing to do the treatment. There were several that he found. But the issue was whether or not her family would be willing to send her somewhere far away to, re to get the treatment. So at this point, she has been seen by doctors at an eye clinic and a burn clinic in Kabul. And she will continue to receive treatment there in the coming months. And her name is Shamsia? Shamsia Hussein. Shamsia, okay. And she was 17 when I first started the process. So it's likely that she's 18 now. Have you had any communication with her at all? No, I haven't. Would you like to? I would like to. I understand that arranging anything of that sort is very difficult, mm -hmm. um, but I would like to. Now, you're a junior in high school right yeah. now. This experience, though, is this something that you want to make, you want to continue doing, and somehow it's going to be a part of your life? It definitely will be, I think. Um, I would like to continue to support the school, um, the Mirwaish School for Girls, even after Shamsia gets her treatment and even after she is better. And I also think that one of the great things about any philanthropic endeavor is that once you get started in philanthropy, it's really hard to stop, something that sticks with you for the rest of your life. So that's going to be a part of your future. Now, have you started thinking about college and all of that yet? I have. Um, I know it's difficult when seniors at my school, that's all they're thinking mm -hmm. about right now. It's very infectious. But right now I'm kind of in the researching phase, still looking at different kinds of schools all across the country and which one might be best for me. You have a younger sister. She's actually sitting here watching this. <laughs> and she was in many of the photos that we saw in the story. Um, and uh, tell me her name. Mariam. And she's what, 14? She's 14. Okay. Is she a partner with you on some of this stuff? Has she been influenced by your work? I think that she has, um, seeing me sitting down at night and writing thank you letters to all the donors and communicating with them. And she came with me to the award ceremony in Seattle. And I do see this as something that she will also get involved in as she progresses through high school and college and in the rest of her life as well. I got a chance to meet your, meet your father there at the luncheon and uh, I think he was very proud of you and uh, no doubt about it for the work that you're doing. Um, you're, you're involved with United Way in I Tacoma? I am, United Way of Pierce County. Right, you're on the board? I am on the board this year. It was a really <laughs> that fantastic voice, opportunity. Huh? Yeah. yeah, it's myself and one other student. She's, the other student's a senior in high school. What does this say about the work that you're doing, but also what, what happened to this young woman and what needs to change for young women around the world? We hear so much about it in various countries and cultures where women are not valued. Mm -hmm. I take it this is something that you want to change. It is a pressing issue. Um, the school that I go to is actually an all-girls school. Right. So we do get a, yeah, so we do get a chance to study these international issues and human rights issues concerning women in school. And I think that women, in getting an education, it not only empowers them, but it empowers the next generation as well. Um, having children whose moms are educated will give them a higher opportunity to become educated as well and to have great futures. So I do think that it is a necessity and that in Afghanistan, the situation is fairly unique um, compared to how other countries in the Middle East have actually become 
very contemporary and where the women are getting educated on a very large scale. So I think the situation in Afghanistan does need to change and I hope that efforts will be made to change it. Well, continued luck with your efforts. Uh, you're inspiring and empowering at the same time. I really Thank appreciate you. it. Also, thanks to the people at Satis Filmworks that did that profile of you. They did a great job and we really appreciate the fact that they're letting us tell your story. Thanks again on Stay in Touch. Thank you for having All right, me. Mina.